In the 6th century BC, there was an active maritime trade in the Mediterranean and Aegean. Many civilizations were utilizing their resources in different markets. One of these civilizations was the Phocians, located on the Aegean coast of Anatolia. This people, affiliated with the Lydia state, primarily engaged in tin trading. During that era, transporting commercial goods to distant regions in the Mediterranean posed a serious risk for every civilization. Pirates and attacks from rival trading fleets were a problem that needed to be prevented. Phocians had a solution for this. They were establishing small military villages in remote coastal areas along their trade routes. These villages served as reliable resting places for them. The population in these settlements would gather current information about the geography they were in and maintain a military force capable of deterring pirates. In 547 BC, the Persian king Cyrus invaded Lydia. Now, Phocians were paying heavy taxes to Persia and living under Persian rule. Aware that they were on the brink of extinction, the Phocians decided to abandon their nests and consider settling in a small military village previously established for the security of their trade routes, located to the east of Corsica. That place was not under the sovereignty of any state. However, the Tyrrhenian Sea was an area under Etruscan control. To the south, there were the Carthaginians, and these two civilizations must have had different plans for that island, without a doubt. Nevertheless, the Phocians boarded their ships and set sail. They arrived at Alalia. Alalia had now become a colony with thousands of inhabitants. As expected, both the Etruscans and the Carthaginians were disturbed by this. Carthaginians were already Phocian sole competitors in the tin trade. The Etruscans, on the other hand, possessed colonies in northern Italy and Sardinia. A strong Phocian presence in Corsica would pose a significant threat to Etruscan colonies. The Greeks already had intentions to conquer all of Spain and Italy through colonies, which needed to be opposed. To resist this, establishing control over the Tyrrhenian Sea was essential. Thus, the Etruscans and Carthaginians joined forces and dispatched a military fleet of 120 ships to Alalia. However, this fleet wasn't an aggregation of the entire might of the Carthaginians and Etruscans. It was a military power they believed would be sufficient to defeat the Phocians. As they approached the shores of Alalia, they were met by a Phocian fleet of 60 ships. Both sides were skilled seamen. The Phocians utilized naval rams at the front of their ships, known as pentaconters. They believed that with the wind in their favor, these ships would break enemy vessels and gain victory. And so, the naval battle began. In this battle that occurred in 540 BC, the Phocians weren't as fortunate as they had hoped. The Etruscans and Carthaginians managed to destroy most of the Phocian fleet, but they also suffered heavy losses and were unable to make a landing, withdrawing instead. They had already inflicted the desired damage, and Alalia was left mostly with civilians. After this defeat, the Phocians were vulnerable and decided to evacuate Corsica. Some dispersed to surrounding lands, some went to the Greek mainland, and others returned to Anatolia. Corsica was now Etruscan territory. Thus, we have come to the end of this topic. Until the next videos, take care.